to the core connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is calling in the new year. We've been talking about New Year's for several days. Um, and uh, now we get to on the on the eve of the eve of <laughs> we get to look at the ritual of calling in a new year and and how we can create rituals that are our own personal rituals to enrich us and support us in the things that we most desire. Good morning, good morning, Rosalyn. Welcome. It's great to be here with you and with everybody else who's joining us this morning. So um, New Year's. I don't know why, but this year I, I'm putting a lot more personal attention toward this whole welcoming in the new year, closing out the old. Um, I, I don't know why it feels more monumental this year, but somehow it does. So I'm sharing that with you and hopefully we can we can all benefit from that and and set powerful intentions for the new year. Good morning, good morning, Jenny. Welcome, great to be here with you. Um, so, yeah, on this eve of the eve of, <laughs> or the morning of the eve of the eve of um, of New Year's. So, I guess I guess we all have the opportunity in any given moment to attribute importance to something, to elevate it in importance in our lives. And um, New Year's is such a great time to use that marker, that, that somewhat arbitrary transition marker to move into a different space, to give ourselves an opportunity to close the book on the prior year and to open uh, blank pages for ourselves. And there might be some lines of poetry or or uh, wonderful quotes that we want to carry into our new book uh, from the prior year lessons and and learnings in fact you know it occurs to me like wouldn't that be a fun thing to do you know as a ritual to be creating um, an accounting of of the lessons that we have learned from the prior year, along with other things, you know, our triumphs, our tragedies, our lessons, our um, new hopes and dreams that have emerged from our experience. Rosalind says our downtown park is having a bonfire, fire dancers, and a band they will celebrate New York time, New York's time. What's the symbology of the ball dropping? That's a really good question. I don't know why the the dropping ball is the symbol of the new year, but the countdown and it it drops and these fireworks happen at midnight. Um, but I love I love the fire dancers and a band and. Uh, the celebration that we have around it, I just see that there's such a wonderful opportunity for um, reflection, reflection and um, presence, to be presencing ourselves to who we are and where we are in the world in this moment. And I mean, experientially more than I mean, physically although that might be an important part of it. You know, some of us are in, in very different physical locations um, or even maybe uh, experiencing our normal physical location in a different way. So we've been talking about taking stock. We've been talking about setting intentions rather than resolutions. And um, 
today we're talking about ritual and what does it look like to to create a ritual for me the notion of ritual is that we are bringing reverence to something that we're bringing a different level of attention to something we're bringing presence and consciousness in a different way you know to create a tradition or a ritual um, that is a sacred space you know um that that has some level of like a, a heightened level of awareness a heightened level of presence a heightened level of intentionality about it um and i think i think that taking that mindfulness to our um to our ritual to our transformation or our you know from our movement from this to that really it's an arbitrary thing you know and we can just like let it go by like it's any other day and that's fine too and why not take the opportunity to um move use it why not take an opportunity to use it for transformation Jenny, I hope that your pain relieves um, and, and that you're able to better celebrate and enjoy. And um, I, I think that this, these times that we're in, in the world, uh, call for a greater sense of presence and awareness. And why not, why not use it? Use it to bring ourselves present. Use it to um, to experience a different level of connection with our our own being, our role, our um, our aspirations, uh, our connections, our commitments. You know, what, what, one of the things that we could do is maybe create a series of questions for ourselves, a series of questions that are provocative, provocative of new perspectives, or provocative of um, greater connection with self. So what kinds of questions might they be? What kinds of questions could we create for ourselves? Let's think. Uh, one is what, is, what is my soul yearning to express? or experience and like maybe use that as a um an impulse to meditation you know like a something to to meditate around or to ponder to sort of quiet yourself and see what emerges in response to that question what what um what would be life changing for me? You know, what in my way of being? So, this is the question that I ask people in our very first core connection session is what in your way of being, if it were to change, would be life altering? And some of the, the things that come up around that question are things around. Um, 
things around self-confidence or things around worry or, you know, the way that the perfectionism or all different kinds of things that we can look at and we can, we can look at, well, what, what can, what shift can I make? What shift can I allow that will make life more fulfilling? And Rosalind says, if it's already done, how would I be feeling if nothing has to be done because it's already here? Ooh, I love that. I love that, Rosalind. That's a great provocative question. If it's already done, how would I be feeling if nothing has to be done? This brings me to the thought of our conversations around sufficiency. You know, if, if I'm already whole and complete, if I don't have to prove myself to anybody, if I'm already worthy of being here without having to prove anything, what would I, what would I be wanting to express? What would I be called to express? What would I be called into um, experiencing? You know, what would I... What would it feel like to feel whole? That's a great question. And maybe maybe we can bring wholeness into our new year. You know, maybe maybe a question would be, um, how can I be a greater expression of the contribution that I am in the world? And that doesn't mean by adding like tons of different doing things to your list. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is um, connecting with one's authentic self to the degree that you can then bring that expression forward in a more, um, in, a, in, a, in greater fulfillment to you and your expression in the world. So that could be a fun question. Um, marking transitions also gives us an opportunity. I mean, this is one of the reasons that it's so much of a blessing that we get to sleep and to wake from sleep is that we get to put closure on the previous day and open and start fresh. And if not starting fresh, we get to start fresher. So um, there's a marker that ends one thing and starts another. It allows us for new beginnings. And so maybe there are some things that from the prior year we can close out. I know burning stuff is... Um, is a, a ritual that a lot of people do so to write the things that we're closing we can complete them write them down and then safely bur burn them yes yeah, so jenny jenny's saying as we watch you yawn um so yeah so well going to sleep and waking up i've not been sleeping all that great so um i i have had some exhaustion to contend with here but um yeah maybe there are some patterns that we can add to our ritual that we want to close out you know that we're that we're willing to release and that's the idea of of writing these things down burning them sort of giving them to the ethers, allowing them to transform and transmute into something more, more positive, perhaps. Um, there is something to be said for completion. And although we don't need the, um, the new year to put a pin on it or put a bow on it, why not? Why not use that? Why not take that opportunity 
to, I mean, we can have this opportunity every day, but we just don't take it. And if we make it a once a year thing, then somehow there's, we, we can imbue it with more power. We could make it a seasonal thing every time there's a solstice or an equinox. Um, or we can use it as a, a new year thing or all of the above. I'm just saying for some reason for me, this year feels like a really good one to have this, this new year's ritual of taking time, maybe doing some journaling, taking a look at what this past year has been, um, having some notion about my intentions for the coming year it just feels big for some reason this time around i don't know if that's the case for you and the truth is that we are the ones that are making the meaning right so if we make something important then we make it important jenny says i think it's a full moon as well well that's pretty cool too so um, there's a lot of power to the full moons and um, why not harness that? And we've, we've been through a lot collectively over the past few years. And um, there, there are things that, so this was, this was really interesting. I just, I just did a session with a, prospective client and um, there were feelings of uselessness futility really in the space good morning good morning Robin welcome it's great to have you here with us we're talking about calling in the new year and uh, rituals around that but anyway this this person was talking about being in a space of futility around circumstances that they couldn't influence directly um, and these are circumstances of war and upheaval and feeling hopeless helpless useless in being able to make a difference and what had come up for them was a sense of empowerment around being able to speak that that experience to be able to share that experience with others that maybe didn't have the capacity to put voice to it before they were essentially given permission to do that, you know, to, to be able to give ourselves permission to recognize where we are in a way that we didn't previously. Um, that can be very powerful. So calling out the experience of where we are and taking ownership of it, that can be a very powerful thing. And um, it allows us to have a certain dimension, I'm gonna, of closure maybe. Closure is such a valuable thing. Uh, not when we force it, but when we allow something to be complete. I think that there's a distinction there. When, when, when we can not, I'm done with it, but I'm done with it. So rather than through the act of saying, that's it, I'm done, that, you know, I'm slamming the door and nailing it shut, that's kind of maybe burying something versus allowing your heart to release something. And so maybe there's a ritual where we can allow ourselves to release those things that have been um plaguing us on different levels you know that that maybe we can actually allow something to be complete 
I'm wondering if you have any particular rituals. I mean, it's not necessary to burn sage or or incense or do chanting or ring bells. You know, it's not necessary to do those things. And sometimes they can help. Sometimes they can help to create an atmosphere that um, that feels more sacred, that feels more special, that feels imbued with a greater intention. And um, I'm just thinking, you know, New Year's is a great time. I think, Jenny, it might have been you, I'm not sure, who mentioned a vision board. You know, that might be a great time of year. That's a fun ritual to do, too, is to create a vision board. Um, and as a as a representation of your intentions, Jenny said, I like drumming. Drumming is awesome, super powerful for bringing, you know, for creating a field of intentionality. And um, yeah, I mean, some people journal. Uh, dancing can be a wonderful thing. Whatever, whatever it is that helps you to anchor in your, your completion of whatever it is you're wanting to complete and to also anchor in your intentions. We were talking about creating a word for the coming year and maybe making a banner of that word so that you see it on an ongoing basis as a reminder or putting it as a, a screensaver on your phone or your computer so that it's present. If you do a vision board, you could have a photograph of that on your phone. So it's there all the time for you. That sounds like a fun idea to me, actually. Um, I'm kind of getting excited about the idea of a vision board all of a sudden. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much when we allow ourselves to dream. And I don't mean dream in a way that isn't connected to the real world, but dream into being, dream into manifestation. And um, there's, I believe for me anyway, this is a year where certain dreams are going to come into fruition or begin to come into fruition. So that's kind of fun and exciting. So Robin says, I've never really had a ritual. Ditto on the vision board. So maybe vision vision boarding can be a new New Year's ritual. Um, I just, it just, allowing ourselves to feel into what is going to be a fuller expression of our being, of our essence and, and our alignment. Robin says, intentions of manifestation. I love it. I love it. And and be if you're going to do a vision board, I invite you to also to be incorporating states of being. That's so much a part of it. You know, a lot of the doing that we're inclined to do is to achieve a certain state of being. And the state of being is available to us without the circumstances. The state of being is available to us at any moment. You know, we can create that internal subjective experience and it is not reliant upon externalities, although we are in, in trained and trained into relying upon externalities for our internal experience. And um, maybe cultivating those, those being states, because when we cultivate the being states, we then are creating the field in which the the doingness can manifest. Um, and when we stop focusing on what we have to do to accomplish something, we also, I'm not saying don't do anything. I'm saying do from inspiration. 
rather than from obligation or, or force. And when we move from that space of inspiration, uh, the, the universe conspires to help us in ways that we would never ever have imagined. In so many instances, things just show up. That's why intention rather than goals are what call to me. They may or may not, it may or may not have the same power for you. But for me, uh, I find that through intention, I'm able to access a magic that isn't otherwise available and accessible. So the invitation is to create some kind of ritual for yourself that is meaningful, that allows you to close things out that have been um, that have been nagging, that have been bothersome, uh, to complete those things uh, or to shift your relationship to them and to create an open book, a new book for yourself for the new year, carrying over only those things that are going to support you in um, fuller more authentic expression of your true essence. I do uh, another one of my working hypotheses. You keep getting getting to hear all these these uh, works in progress, but um, is now I forgot it because I just glimpsed and saw what uh, Rosalind was saying. Not from a place of lack, better from a space that is accessible forgotten to be remembered so um i like that because what we do is we remember we reassemble all these these things and if we just forget to remember them then they sort of float away right if we if we stop reconstructing them over and over and over again um I wish I could remember what I was going to say. Oh, well, lack of sleep. I'm going to blame it on that. And uh, meantime, I just wish you a year of wonder and joy and growth and um, inspiration. And... Uh, works of process. Jenny says, maybe works in process or works of processes. Interesting. So I will see you next year. And I just want to thank you for a year that has been quite remarkable for me in, in our connection. It's been such a gift. And I am so deeply grateful to you. And I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And I invite you to check out the other wonderful programming on Enlightened World Network, EWN, One with the Earth, Enlightened World Living. And happy, happy New Year. <laughs>